Uh, we're going to return now to the conversation that uh, we were having with Joe Delaney, a local resident and campaigner with the Grenfell Action Group. And Joe, thank you very much for bearing with us. We wouldn't normally pull away from uh, such a serious conversation, uh, but obviously a, a huge number of important stories going on today. And apologies for um, pulling away from our conversation, but thank you again oh, for no, waiting. That's quite all right. Um, um, Joe, you were telling right. us. I mean, as local residents have said, we feel like, you know, maybe if we joined the DUP, we'd be listened to more. <laughs> to be quite honest, because it seems that, you know, Theresa May's attention is only focused on things that will keep Theresa May in Downing Street. She spent one and a half billion pounds to keep her home. They were unwilling to spend 5,000 in order to ensure ours didn't burn down. Joe, you were saying that you were in a meeting uh, with the judge, the former judge who's been appointed to lead this public yeah. inquiry. You were explaining just before mm -hmm. we pulled away that a lot of people are concerned that his, are concerned that his experience is mainly around areas yeah. of commercial law. You think it should be someone with a, a background in criminal law. The point has been made or raised by a number of people that actually it's that commercial experience that will allow him to dig down into the details of cladding uh, contracts and so on uh, to try to determine what went on uh, with Grenfell. Do, do you accept that point at all? Uh, I accept that point to a certain extent. However, if you look at the work that the Grenfell Action Group have done over the last five years, they've, they've proven quite competent at being able to dig through contracts and find things that were safe and unsafe, you know, and where their wishes were ignored. So whilst I can see this as being a small part of the inquiry, we do think that the wider remit of the inquiry does need to be sort of led by someone with a more criminal mind, you know, who can dig down into the facts and get to the, get to the bottom of issues far quicker. A, a simple contract dispute isn't going to answer the questions as to why so many people died and why so many people were evacuated. A criminal, you know, uh, angle on this inquiry may be able to do that. Obviously, everybody wants answers as quickly as they can. Uh, do you think that residents are prepared to accept the appointment of Sir Martin uh, and to give him the opportunity to prove his worth if you feel that's what he needs to do? Well, I mean, it does look to us more and more that there is an attempt now to split this inquiry into several strands. And that, I think, is going to cause real disquiet with local residents. You know, we, we're, we're still waiting on that. What do you, you mean by that, Joe? Two, Sorry, splitting you know? it into several strands. Well, I mean, even, uh, even Samor Bick um, said today he saw himself as more as a contracts person. And whether there was criminal negligence or things like that, you know, he may touch upon those issues, but that certainly wouldn't be the focus of his investigation or whether there's been outright criminal activity by any of the companies or individuals involved. He didn't see his investigation either. Personally, I, and I know a lot of the residents see that as crucial. And so it does seem that there will be different strands to this inquiry. Personally, I think the part that Samor Bick leads should be a smaller part of a greater inquiry that is criminally led. Uh, so just to try to establish then whether you feel people are prepared to uh, extend some patience to, to give him the benefit of the doubt to uh, entrust him with this task, do you think they're going to? Because clearly the resident's confidence in whoever is leading this inquiry, that really has to be there, doesn't it? It does have to be there because he's going to need input from all of us. And if we don't have any faith in the process from the outset, you know, obviously our input is going to be reduced, rightly or wrongly. You know, some of us may be pragmatists and attempt to work with him. Other people may just suddenly lose hope. I mean, if you look at the Taylor inquiry, the Taylor inquiry delivered very technical recommendations when it was published 30 years ago into the Hillsborough disaster. It was only yesterday that criminal charges were announced. You know, frankly, we don't have the time or the patience to wait that long. After all, most of the evacuees' hotels are only booked until the 31st of July. Uh, do you think, actually, then, if speed is off the essence, which clearly it is, uh, you want to get the proper answers, but you want to get those answers quickly, uh, that actually Sir Martin should get on with the job and uh, you can see whether that does lead to criminal charges? Yeah, but as I said, that's what the Hillsborough families did. And look where they are 30 years later. Charges have only just been announced. Still no one's appeared in the dock for this and still no one's gone to prison. You know, and we, we're not prepared to wait that long. 
The Hillsborough, the Hillsborough group have already contacted us and expressed their support and are willing to cooperate with us, you know? It shouldn't be the case that victims of these sorts of atrocities all around the country have to band together in order to ensure justice. I mean, that's what the CPS, the police and, you know, the judiciary are for. Did you discuss with uh, Sir Martin Moorbeck uh, this morning the terms and framework of the inquiry? Yes, we did. We did. Uh, I, I was one of the people who raised the issue that we see this more as a criminal inquiry and I don't think there was a person around the table when we were there today who didn't agree with me. Was he able so to give you any assurances? Was he able to give you, sorry to interrupt, any assurances on that particular point? Not, not any that have sort of settled any disquiet that any of the residents feel. As I say, I mean, he's a very good lawyer when it comes to insurance and maritime law. You know, I get that he's dealt with fires on huge ships and oil tankers and things like that in the past. I get that this is an unprecedented incident at the tower over there. But, you see, I still don't think that he sort of gets the issues as we, as we perceive them as residents, you know. And perhaps the case he was involved with, with the poor woman and her family who were moved to Milton Keynes, is indicative of that. You know, I, I, I really do want to give him the benefit of the doubt. I am prepared to do so. But my patience and the patience of all the residents around here is wafer thin, and we won't be prepared to give him that benefit for very long. So you will give him the benefit of the doubt, you will cooperate, and you will hope that he proves to you, in other words, that, that he grasps what the issues are, what the core problems are for you, quickly. Well, I'm just one person who's around here. I, I mean, I don't speak on behalf of every resident who's involved. And the other risk that there may be then is that some people just disengage from the process entirely or that they become splits and certain people make certain demands and others make others, you know, and then we lose our coherent voice. I really don't hope that this isn't a deliberate ploy by the government to ensure that this happens. OK, Joe Delaney, very good to hear from you uh, today and thank you for your thank time. You. Joe Delaney from the Grenfell Action Committee.